Hi everyone, Ken here. Last week we tried something new, going through houses on Zillow together. I received a lot of really positive feedback and decided to give it another go. Just like last time, I have not seen these houses yet. But for now, let's just dive right in and see what Dalton picked out for us. Dalton, where are we going first? Our first house is in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, priced at $2.9 million. All right, we're starting off strong. It looks like we have a beautiful Second Empire style home. It says built in 1880 on 1.84 acres. Let's start going through these pictures. So right off the bat, the Second Empire style house is absolutely gorgeous. I love that it's brick all the way around. Let's keep going through this. Oh wow, look at the tile rug on this veranda. This would have been incredibly expensive and time consuming back when the house was constructed. Oh, it has a name. Look at that. Historic landmark, Baywood, the Alexander King Estate. Well, that's really interesting. Now I'm expecting to see a lot of historic detailing on the inside, so I'm hoping this next photo will bring us there. And it does. It looks like we are coming into the entrance hall and the wallpapering on the ceiling. This isn't necessarily something that would have been done back in the period when the house was constructed. However, this kind of styling was made popular by artist Butch Cardam in San Francisco back in 1963. He brought a lot of vivid colors into these old Victorian houses, and people just kind of ran with it. But that being said, I mean, this is kind of what you would expect to see inside of a house like this. I love the music room. This is absolutely darling. The use of color is really well balanced. And then it looks like we go into the billiards room after that. Oh, and the butler's pantry. This is great. And I love how they have the stage as well, with the silvers behind the glass pane cabinets. This really helps us transport back in time and imagine how this room was really used. We could imagine the staff in the butler's pantry polishing the silvers before bringing them out for a really fancy dinner party. It's just little things like that that really help to bring the house to life. And it looks like we're now in the library. The parquet wood floors, pilasters on the door surrounds. This is, this is incredible. I absolutely love the woodworking here. And the kitchen. I absolutely adore this. When people don't over-modernize kitchens in these old houses, it really speaks volumes to the love and care that they've received over the years, because it's so tempting to just really update and go with really trendy kitchens in a house of this caliber, and especially with this price tag. But to be able to step back and say what's appropriate for the time period, what would blend modern utility with this old world aesthetic, and then make it come to life in a way that's both functional and aesthetic. It's a very difficult thing to do, and I think this house just knocks it out of the park. Looks like we have a few more rooms to go through, so let's just keep scrolling. Oh, the stair hall. This is amazing. I love the newel post and all the rosettes along the stairs tread. That's really gorgeous. And that is one thing about this house. It just has absolutely beautiful millwork. Oh, and an East Lake style bathroom. That's interesting. I've only ever seen that in a couple of houses. Of course, the Eastlake style was really popular around the Victorian era, but we didn't tend to see that translate into indoor bathrooms because it just wasn't quite the norm for the time. So whether or not this is original or has been added over the years, I still think that this is really charming, just like with the kitchen that we saw earlier. It speaks volumes to the maintenance and the care that this house has received over the years. All right, the bedrooms are really good size. Another gorgeous bathroom. Another giant bedroom. Yeah, this is an absolutely gorgeous house. And it looks like we've reached the end of the photos. Dalton, what's next for us? Next up, we have a house in Glen Cove, New York at $9.9 .9 million. So Glen Cove is one of my favorite parts of Long Island. It was considered part of the Gold Coast back in the 19th century. So looking at this house, I kind of get that same vibe that this might have been someone's country house originally. So let's just start going through this. I see a lot of French Normandy influence on this house, and while that style definitely had its heyday a little earlier than 1927, people were absolutely still building in the style throughout the United States. It really was just a matter of personal preference, and honestly, I think this is absolutely gorgeous. And it's surprisingly rustic on the interior. I wonder if we'll see this continued throughout the rest of the house. Okay, so here in the parlor, drawing room, living room, whatever you might want to call it, we're starting to see some wood-clad walls with built-in bookcases, some really intricate woodwork here. Oh my goodness, these stairs are incredible. Oh, and that view, it looks like that's the ocean out there. Okay, here we go. Yep, this is what I expect whenever I hear 1920s in Glencove, New York. 
you get these rooms that are kind of reminiscent of the Great Gatsby aesthetic, as I like to call it. This includes the Jacobian ceilings, the wood-clad walls, views out to the water, all the things that just really make you think of that old New York luxury. And right after that, we're back to a more rustic room. Oh, but this is absolutely gorgeous. I love the muted colors in here. Oh, and another gorgeous kitchen. Dalton, you did a really good job picking out these houses. I am absolutely loving these so far. Oh, and blue tiles for the backsplash. So there's a really interesting kind of footnote in history about the blue tiles being used as backsplash in some of these older, grander houses. So I want to put up a picture of Claude Monet's kitchen. He, of course, was a very famous artist. And in his own kitchen, he used these beautiful blue tiles. And when people saw these and heard about them, there was a group of people for a very short window of time who just wanted to copy the style and bring it into their own homes. So it's always interesting to find that influence kind of translated into these old money mansions because you start to wonder if there was some sort of a connection there with the artist. Maybe there was a Monet hung in this house at some point, and maybe the artist visited. These are things that we can speculate about, and I'm not going to look into that at the moment. But I might circle back around because whenever I see these little clues, I always know that there's a more interesting story behind them. Yeah, this house just continues on and on with these absolutely gorgeous features, really interesting artisan rework, beautiful plaster work and woodwork everywhere. Yeah, this is a gorgeous house for sure. Can you imagine just waking up every single morning, stepping out onto your balustraded terrace, looking across the pond beyond the trees to see the ocean cresting on the horizon? This is just a little slice of heaven right here. Dalton, what's next for us? Next, we're heading off to Buffalo, New York, for a home priced at $1.2 million. I always like to start by looking at the year these houses were built, because that'll be really telling about what we can expect to find inside, or what we should expect to find inside. This one was built in 1900, and it's on about a half-acre lot, so that's pretty substantial. All right, it's an arts and crafts style home. This is, of course, one of my favorite styles. I live in an arts and crafts home, and I'm currently renovating one. As you can see, I still have not had a chance to ditch the gray paint yet. We found a few things that we needed to address. You can see I have some holes currently patched in the wall behind me. And once we take care of these few other little things, we'll be able to really start those fun projects. And I'm hoping to have an update video out for you, possibly by New Year's, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, let's see what they've done inside of this house. Okay, right off the bat, we are starting off strong. Beautiful wood grain, gorgeous wainscoting, stained glass windows. This is really everything you would expect to see in an arts and crafts style home. And we hadn't even zoomed out yet. Yeah, this is absolutely gorgeous. It looks like the people might be in the process of moving. We can see a bunch of boxes everywhere, but that's okay. We can look behind that to see a really magnificent stair hall. Oh, wow, the pointed gothic window with the stained glass. Yeah, this is truly incredible. And the red velvet carpet, you know, that's something that, unlike the Victorian era home that we saw first, that is something that's more period appropriate to this style of house. It's not just something you see played out in period pieces. This was definitely a trend that a lot of wealthy people would include in their homes to some extent. I'm not sure where this room is, but the terracotta herringbone floors are absolutely stunning. And I just love how rustic the oversized wainscoting is with that plate rail. Once again, these are those arts and crafts themes that just really draw you into the style. Yeah, this is a fun space. I wish I could see this while they're not in the process of moving. I bet this was just absolutely darling when it was all staged. And we just skipped past the kitchen real fast. There was really nothing to see there. Looks like we're now getting into the bedrooms, another parlor. Yeah, I mean, this is a really nice house. Those wood floors are gorgeous. They might just need a little TLC. The fireplace surround. That's really, really beautiful. All right, well, it looks like we already saw the most grand part of the house, so let's go ahead and skip on to the next one. Where are we headed next? Next up, we have a house in Baltimore, Maryland, priced at $1.8 million. Built in 1850, 10,268 acre lot. Something tells me that's not a correct measurement, but that's okay. We get the context that it's in an urban landscape probably on a pretty traditional city lot. Love this Greek Revival styling. Very simple, very refined. Oversized cornice. Yeah, this is something I'm really excited to see. That stair hall is so grand. All right, we'll just skip back through those pictures. 
Looks like this might have been a business. I see the exit sign, fire alarms. I know that's not really the point, but still something I noticed immediately. This is absolutely gorgeous. I love the vestibule doors, the large mirror in the entryway. That is absolutely something that would have been in this house during the period it was built in. Such a large drawing room. Wow. That is truly a massive, massive space. From this angle, I can really see why this house is so special. We can see all of these fluted plasters supporting archways, pocket doors concealed beyond this millwork, again more pocket doors, corbels supporting more archways, and then these vintage chandeliers in three different rooms. This is something I'm just really excited to keep exploring. Now, these crystal chandeliers are really something. And once again with the wallpaper, the color scheme goes back to Butch Cardam in San Francisco in the 1960s. and once again, it's something that we expect to see inside of these houses when they have been restored, especially if they were restored some time ago. And that's perfectly fine. I just love the flow of this house. Of course, you have the grand stair hall that bypasses all those front rooms, or you could travel through with the beautiful interiors of the public spaces. And it really is interesting to see so many of these overlapping patterns, because that's definitely something that they would have done back in the Victorian era and a little bit before. Okay, here's something that I noticed that I want to call some attention to. We can see where these two walls meet. There's not a sharp corner. It rounds out. This is something that the owners, the original owners, would have paid a premium for back when the house was constructed. And in some of my house tours that I did in St. Louis, we saw quite a few homes that had this feature. It was just such a subtle way of letting people know that you had this extra money to kind of throw around on your house, even if it wasn't into artisan millwork or plaster work. All right, I guess we can take a second to look at this kitchen and then just move right along here. Lovely stained glass windows. If you like wallpaper, there's definitely a lot of different types of wallpaper to see in this house. But I'm more interested in these architectural features like the staircase. I mean, this is stunning just to trace out the handrail here. An artist would have spent a lot of time working on that almost 200 years ago. And I think that's just really crazy to think about how long some of these things survive in these houses, just completely untouched. Gorgeous fireplace in this bedroom. Yeah, I mean, this is a beautiful house. I'm kind of surprised that the walls are so pale up here. I'm not seeing any more wallpaper in the bedrooms. A more modernized bathroom. Oh, and a library. Okay, I love that library table. That's really something there. Oh, and then look at that giant skylight over the staircase. So I don't know if this is original or if this was added later, but this does bring up a good point about houses from this era. Before the days of air conditioning, it was not too uncommon for there to be these large light wells above staircases, or even cupolas that would have transom windows that could be pulled open by strings to allow the hot air in the middle of the summertime to vent out of the house. It was kind of a way to cool off the home before air conditioning was invented or even became popular. It looks like we found the backyard, and this is definitely not 10,000 acres, but it's still a very large lot for an urban area. So I think that's about all of the pictures. So Dalton, where are we going next? Now we're headed over to Detroit, Michigan for a home priced at $3.2 million. All right, so 15,379 square feet, 14 beds, 8 baths, built in 1914 with 3.75 acres. All right, so it looks like the street-facing side of the house is fairly symmetrical. Oh yeah, this has great curb appeal. And a Lamborghini in the driveway, you know, that never really hurts. But I'm more interested in seeing the interior because I'm seeing some things that are really, really like in these older homes from the facade. So it looks like you enter into a very large vestibule or perhaps an anti-hall. Terracotta tile on the floor, wrought iron doors, niches for statues. I think this is everything that we really look for in these Gilded Age mansions. I'm thinking this is the vestibule we just entered through. Looks like you would open these French doors and step into the cross hall. And I see a banister over here. I'm guessing that's probably the grand staircase. Oh yeah. Wow, look at that. Oh, this is absolutely gorgeous. I'm not sure who designed this house, but great attention seems to have been paid to sight lines. With each view that we've seen so far, there have just been these really magnificent spaces to visually anchor us as we continue through the house and draw us further into it, such as the fireplace we're looking at right now. Wow, look at this relief work. 
Yet this house is truly a work of art. I would give just about anything to have a library just like this. Absolutely stunning. And it's always really interesting to see when libraries have either open bookshelves or closed bookcases, because it tells you a lot about the original owner. When I see these glass pane bookcases, there tends to be an accompanying story about how the original owner collected rare volumes of books or first editions that they wanted to keep dust free. So next up is the music room, perfect for what it is. And the dining room is massive, wow. Yeah, this is an absolutely gorgeous house, and it just looks like it keeps going on and on and on with just beautiful spaces. So I took a little break to find out who was the designer of this house, and it looks like it was Hamilton and Mead based out of Cleveland, Ohio. And we have seen their work before on this channel, and every time their name has come up, the comments have just been really positive about how much you guys love their designs. And as we go through this, we can really start to see some of their signatures, such as the stone block walls, checkered floors, and wrought iron balustrade, plaster medallions. I mean, this is just all of their signatures. And then their use of proportions was so unique. It was done at such a grand scale, but also a very livable scale. I don't think any of their houses were necessarily meant to be ostentatious showstoppers, but rather this kind of quiet and refined luxury that was still very much usable and livable, which is not something you might find in a palace where it's just too formal to appreciate and enjoy a house, but something that's just cozy enough and just at the perfect scale that you can feel proud about it, but also feel like you're not wasting space because it's just a very, very functional home. And there are a ton of pictures of this house. Of course, I'm going to put the link for each of the homes we're looking at today down in the video description. So if you do want to continue exploring the house, you absolutely can. All right, everyone, I think that's all we have time for today. Let me know if you'd want to do this again, and if there are any different themes that you'd like Dalton to look for, whether it's all houses built between a certain time frame, or all houses under a certain price point, or something to that effect. I think that could make for a really fun future video. I had a lot of fun doing the first Zillow read-through, and it was just great to have a chance to do this again. Anyways, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell notification so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.